Uh, yeah, it should, it should pick it up right there. But like I was saying, it's unfortunate, but I think that... Oh, yeah, this light's a lot better. I think that, uh, you know, within the, within the next 10 years, you're going to see a, a few more guys have problems uh, physically. And, you know, my, my, my biggest... My biggest uh, reasoning to that is look at how many people get sick that don't put anything artificial into their bodies mm -hmm. and have heart problems, liver problems, kidney problems, diabetes, and they never did anything, let alone put you know, steroids and diuretics and all that stuff into their system. And the, the, you know, the bad thing about it is that uh, professional bodybuilding would be gone. Yep. It would be gone if there were no yeah. steroids involved because people are so used to seeing incredibly big, in, incredibly muscular, in, incredibly ripped guys now. It, it ain't gonna, it just ain't gonna happen. It's, 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 it's never gonna change. It's never gonna go away. And it, it's, no, I mean, I mean, you're just not gonna get that kind of stuff. No, of course. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's physically impossible. Uh, and, and I was on the low side of doing stuff. I really never did anything to a great extent. I took six months out of the year off totally clean. And um, because of my uh, genetic propensity towards high cholesterol, I, I screwed myself. But um, it, it is too bad because it's a great sport. And bodybuilding, I think the art of bodybuilding is when guys are in the gym training and they're trying to beat themselves. They're trying to beat their best uh, the best that they've done each time. I know every time I went to the gym, I would try to better myself and best myself each time. And that was pretty cool. And then money came into the picture, contracts, and I knew that if I didn't keep doing well or look in a certain way, um, then, you know, Weeder wasn't going to renew my contract. That would be end of story. Yeah. You know, and that's you know, a, a bodybuilder lives in the gym, he's not going to... And I found that out the hard way. You know, after I got sick, and we had basically canceled my contract, um, there wasn't much call for a 38-year-old 30, ex-pro bodybuilder out there. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of these guys got to think about. Yeah, you can open gyms, you can do, but that's... That's it. You're much more limited. You know, when all you know is going to the gym and getting ready for a show, you can train other guys if and that's, that's kind of what your propensity is. That gets is. old too. I mean, I couldn't do that. I, I've had tons of guys ask me that. I just... I no, guess I that's what um, Milos is doing a lot of. Uh, he enjoys that. You know, he likes... You know, Milos likes dumping his, uh, his knowledge on other guys. Uh -huh. And he likes, you know, patting them on the back and telling them how good they look. Uh -huh. uh, that's, that was never my case. You know, if you go to the gym, it's you're going to be hardcore. And you don't get a pat on the back, you don't get anything. I mean, you go to the gym, you do it for yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. If you get somebody else that's telling you what to do and, and, and making you go there every day, then, then I don't know how you can have any self-respect for yourself. I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, to the, I mean w w the way I am now, I don't lift with weights anymore because I can't do it the way I used to want to do it. And if somebody was you know, on, my, on my ass pushing me to go do it and, and making me... Oh, you're doing good, Mike. Oh, you're doing great. I don't want to hear that shit. You know, it's got to come from within. You know? Now, did the doctor um, tell you no weights? Or? Yeah. It, I, I'm in rough shape. I mean, I got, I, got, I got some serious issues. I'm on, my heart's working at 20%. If it goes one, if, if it goes, if, if my heart goes one mark below that, it's, um, I'm on the list for an open heart. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on the list for a uh, oh, uh, heart transplant. I mean, I already had, look at I already had the open heart surgery. I got everything. Open heart surgery. Now I got the pacemaker defibrillator. Uh -huh. I mean, there's not much more they could do for me. I mean, my, my, my heart's like a Frankenstein monster right now. now how, how's your, how's your uh, cardio when you, now do you go running? Or? I go, I, I try to run every morning. And, uh, I walk at least three miles. I try to run when I can, but my, you know, I can feel it. It just, my, the medications, because my muscles are very sore and very tired, uh, they start cramping up, uh -huh. and I just—I don't get winded, but I get tired. I get real tired. I'm nothing like I used to be. Uh -huh. Ever since they cut me open back in '04, 
Uh, I'm not the same animal. I mean, all I can tell guys is check your health, because I always thought I'd escape by. Yeah. You know, it's it's very important. I'm 42 years old. I don't want to die yet. Yeah. You know, I got two young young kids in there, yeah. and a young wife. Uh, to, to give that up for 16 years of bodybuilding is not worth it. Yeah. And if I had a crystal ball, I would I would have changed it. But at the time, now did you um did you get blood uh, blood work done? Oh yeah, when I was go I, you know. I had blood. I had. I had every year blood work. I went. For, I went for stress tests. What blew me away was my blood work came back excellent, except for my cholesterol. My good cholesterol was like zero for like five years, oh. and I didn't pay attention to that. But I took every stress test. I took the, the radiation stress test. I took all this stuff, and I passed it with flying colors. The only thing that caught it was the angiogram uh. when they stuck the camera up inside of me and they saw that my arteries were blocked and then when they then when they cut me open I guess uh, I went to heart failure because when they cut me open they blocked they blocked one of the passages two of them were uh, two of them were 100 percent blocked one of them was 78 percent blocked when they cut me open and they closed the other one off to clamp me off there was no blood flow going to my heart, so it stopped. So that caused damage to my heart. Then when I went in a year later for another angiogram, they were blocked up again. And when they stuck the camera up there, uh, the artery that they stuck the camera in blocked up the only open artery, and that gave me another heart attack. Oh. So that caused me to have more heart damage. Oh. So now my heart is, is working at 20%. But, you know, the way I look at it, is my heart at 20% is like a normal guy's at 50%. Yeah. So I'm not worrying about it. Yeah. You know? I mean, if is I that, what's the, Is the prognosis good long term as long as you take care of yourself? Or? Uh, you know, they, I mean, they don't tell me. Every, every time I ask them about long term, they just say it depends. You get some guys that'll live 10 years, some guys that'll live 5 years, some guys that'll live 20 years. It just, uh -huh. it's just, it's a luck of the draw. I mean, 20% heart rate is not good. But I, I just can't see myself going anywhere. I mean, it hasn't caused me to kill over and drop dead yet. So I don't see myself going anywhere for a long time. I, I mean, I, I, and I don't yeah, plan I, on it. I suppose as long as you, you know, I mean, keep the heart, you know, that you have in good condition, you know, keep the cardio up. And and if it comes down to a heart transplant, then, you know, I, I, go, I get on the list. But, yeah. I mean, I'm not one of those guys that are bedridden. I'm up yeah. every morning at 5 a.m. I go for a walk, go for a run. And uh, I'm very active. So, unfortunately, I don't lift weights anymore, which I miss. Uh, but they tell me I can't lift weights anymore. Too much pressure on my heart. But it sucks. Well, I know I gotta get this weight off myself. It's taxing on my heart, you know. You got I tell you, it's amazing what your heart, the, the, I mean, the, all the, fun, like, the functions that the heart does, I had no idea about. Yeah. Like, just getting fluid out of your systems, out of your system. If your heart's not working right, um, your lungs fill up with fluid. Yeah. Because the heart is the one that gets rid of fluids. It's the one that gets in the blood. And, you know, a couple of the reasons why I had to go to the hospital was because my heart wasn't pumping strong enough, and my lungs filled up with fluid, and all of a sudden, I started drowning. I had all this white foam coming out of my nose, out of my mouth. I couldn't breathe. And it was from my heart, the heart function. And nothing, I tell you what, nothing, nothing is worth getting sick over. I was a guy that thought I was going to be like my grandfather, be in my 90s with no problems. But 38 years old, open heart surgery, ridiculous. These guys that I get into it now, and I still get letters tons of letters from guys 16, 17, 18, 19 years old telling me the cycles they're doing. They're fucking insane. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with these guys. Yeah. And they're, they're not, like, a lot of them aren't even competing. And then, yeah, competing and these are guys that are going to go to the beach or they're going to do a local show yeah. and then never do it and then not, not make a buck out of it. You know, my, my biggest excuse was it pulled, me, it pulled me out of the ghetto. 
I, I was able to make a living at it. I had no other skills. You know? These guys, they're going to college, school. They, they, they got no reason we're doing this stuff. Yeah. All I can tell you is don't put anything artificial into your body for any reason. Any reason. I, I don't know how to emphasize that. I, I wish I could go back. Because when I was a fighter, when I was a boxer, I wouldn't even sit next to a guy that was smoking. You know? I would get up and leave. I, w I was so scared of my lungs getting lung cancer. Then I get into bodybuilding, and all of a sudden I'm in the mirror sticking needles into my ass and into my shoulders, not knowing what I'm putting in there. Just going by, you know, some freaking uh, gym doctor. Yeah. You know? Somebody, one guy. Yeah, that's um. I, I didn't bring the article with me, but um, it sounded pretty good. It sounded like it, it would um. I wish they'd listen. I wish you know. I wish I had somebody tell me. All I heard when I was going, when you know, I told them the USA was, oh, these will never hurt you. They got no, uh, there's no uh, medical proof. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Well, growing up, I remember you know when I was starting to oh back in like eighty. 80s, uh, early 80s, mid 80s, you know, reading the magazines, you know, if you do have the right diet, you train hard, yeah. you can look like this, but yeah. that one factor, you know, the, the steroid factor, uh, you know. The late the late 80s is like when I found out about it, and mm -hmm. coming, you know, 90, 91, I won the USA, I was, I was on nothing hardly, and um, then 92, all of a sudden I'm a pro. And I got guys coming at me every which way, telling me these crazy cycles, you know. So, you know, when you're young, you just, you know, you're bulletproof. You just start dumping anything into your system. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Until, you, until you start getting injuries and stuff, you don't realize how fragile the body is. Unbelievable. Yeah. You, pay, you pay for it later. Yeah. And, and I'm definitely paying for it now. I'm definitely not the same man I was 10 years ago. I mean, that, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's. It's very abnormal to be way as far off as I am. I, mean, I know you get older and things change, but uh, for the shape I used to be in and the conditioning I'm able to you know do now, I mean I get I go for my three four mile walk run and I come I come home and I gotta go to sleep for two hours. I mean I'm wiped out, wiped out. I, got, I mean I eat one meal a day. I got no appetite, and um, like I said, I'm one. A whole shitload of medications just to keep myself alive. So you, you eat one meal a day. That's it. Oh wow! If I'm lucky, just because you don't have the appetite. I got no. And you know my appetite used to be nine, fifteen, thirteen, twelve thousand calories a day. And mm -hmm. now, I could ha I could have a sandwich and a couple of glasses of orange juice and not eat anything else all day. Wow. Nothing. It, it's amazing. Let me get a shot of those calves since you still got those things. My, the, the last survivors. <laughs> the last survivors. Man, those things are still good, man. Jeez. Hang on, let me get some. Okay. And there's where I took my vein, right there. Oh, let's see. And the surgeon said it was the biggest vein he's ever taken on anybody's leg. Yeah. It's what he said. I bet. It's what he said. He goes, it's probably from where he has a lift it. Yeah, he I bet. Was, he said it was like a garden hose. Uh -huh. Just all the years of heavy, you know, the blood pumping, 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 pumping. Yeah, I remember showing a picture of Tom Platts one time to my, uh, I was in high school, to my uh, math teacher. And he so would like, say, man, that, that vein is as big as some people's arteries, great. you know. Yeah, and that's what he said, too. He said, you know what, it's good, Mike, he said. Uh, the vein from your leg is almost as big as the artery we're replacing on your uh, heart, which is good, so hopefully uh, it'll stay open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think I got what I need out I here. Get the wife and kids? Sure. <laughs>